Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Bangkok Edge, uh, and welcome to this session. I have a great pleasure in going to be able to introduce to you Kun Bin Ben Davis and his new book, Vanishing Bangkok. So let's give a hand of applause to Kun Ben. Thank you for the kind introduction, and thank you all for being here. Um, given the subject of my book is Old Bangkok, it seems entirely appropriate to be launching it here at Museum Siam in the historic part of the city. But what if I was to tell you that 10 years from now, most of the buildings, the old buildings and old communities that I photographed in my book will be gone, or that since I started work on this project in uh, the beginning of 2014, close to 25%, close to a quarter of the subjects I photograph uh, have already been torn down or have changed virtually beyond recognition. That's one of the reasons I'm so passionate about what I do. Uh, and about preserving and documenting uh, this history. So over the next um, 20 minutes or so, I'd like to show you some slides from the book so that you get to experience some of the magic of old Bangkok. Um, before I do a couple of points about myself, I'm a British journalist, photographer and author. I've uh, lived in Asia for the past 30 years, mainly out of Bangkok, but with stints in Manila and Hong Kong. Um, and I've written and, and photographed a number of books on vanishing cultures in the region, uh, on Laos, on the Philippines, on Thailand. And I've produced a book on organized crime and, and the illegal wildlife trade. But um, back to the vanishing um, Bangkok project, um, and I'm uh, going to take you through some slides. Okay, so um, this is the first picture of uh, a rather disheveled looking me with my uh, 4x5 Linhof film camera, which actually I was crazy enough to lug around the city. Um, as you can see, it's, it's pretty big, uh, it's pretty bulky, and um, it can take 10 to 15 minutes just to set up the camera and, uh, and focus. So um, a lot of people say, well, why bother? Uh, and the answer to that is it seemed uh, entirely appropriate to use one of these old style cameras to uh, capture the old city. On top of that, these old Linhof cameras, they take the most beautiful images um, thanks to the very large size of the negatives, they're uh, four by five inches, uh, plus very high quality lenses. Um, and on top of that, it forced me to really slow down and work out what I wanted to achieve in my photographs, which I think is something rare in this very fast changing digital world in which we live in. Um, Actually, the camera attracted a fair amount of attention. Uh, a lot of times people would come up to me, they'd ask to have their photograph standing alongside me working with this uh, relic of a bygone era. Um, I also had uh, a, an interesting encounter with uh, a soy dog who was obviously a bit of a fan of mine. I was totally engrossed uh, taking a photograph of uh, one of these decrepit old buildings. And out of the corner of my eye, I saw this soy dog sniveling at my camera bag, which was lying on the ground. Before I could do anything about it, uh, the dog lifted its leg and, and relieved itself on my very expensive camera gear. So um, that's some of the downside of, of working with uh, uh, this sort of camera. Okay, to move on to um, some of the images that I took. This is one of the first images that I took with the Linhof camera. Actually, one of my favorite 
images. Um, I stumbled across it just very short distance from Hualompong Railway Station and, uh, and Ramafor Road. As probably most of you know, Bangkok used to be a city of canals. Um, most of the canals have since been filled in, uh, have become roads, but this image to me gives this rather gorgeous feel of uh, old Bangkok with this luxuriant vegetation and uh, sleepy waterway. And it's actually now just 300 meters from, uh, from a Starbucks cafe. So that's the sort of diversity we have in this city. Uh, the uh, next image shows a, a very different side of Bangkok's character. It's the, uh, the old customs house on Sharon Krung Road. I think one of the most beautiful and imposing uh, buildings in, in, in the city, certainly to my mind. For uh, many years, it was uh, the place where uh, boats trading up and down the Chao Pai River would come to pay their import duties. Uh, in the 50s, I think it was that the port moved to Klong Toi, and um, this became a centre for, um, for the marine police. And then several years later, uh, it became the home of Bangkok Fire Brigade and their families. So for many occasions, I visited this building and I'd find uh, fire engines just parked outside. Um, and I probably visited about a dozen times before I came across this rather beautiful scene, which is um, students from the university just having their graduation photographs taken. Uh, this next image taken on Song Wat Road, which is uh, near Talat Noi district, one of the oldest districts in the city. Um, these shop houses actually are, are very famous for their stucco decorations, uh, mainly, of mainly, mainly of exotic fruits like coconuts or, or, or watermelons. They're believed to symbolize abundance and um, uh, found all over Southeast Asia. So it doesn't look at this was a, a very difficult image to take because it's a fairly busy road um, and uh, I actually had to put the tripod out on the street. Fortunately, a friend of mine was, uh, was kind enough to risk life and limb uh, standing on the road waving madly at oncoming tuk-tuks and, and motorbikes. Now, uh, Bangkok, like um, many of the world's great capital cities, was built on the banks of the river, in this case, the Chao Pai River. I've always found this a very majestic waterway because of the, uh, the old uh, rice barges that uh, are towed to and fro, as they have been for centuries, and, um, and also the, 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 the quays, uh, many old warehouses. So I spent weeks actually trawling the city looking for a decent location from where, uh, where I could photograph. And finally I found the, uh, the roof, 26th floor of a condo in, in Tonburi. And I was, actually, I was fortunate enough to be there during this huge rainstorm when the city was engulfed in, in, in black clouds, rain poured down. Um, and then eventually the storm stopped, the rain cleared, uh, and this was the rather lovely photograph that I, uh, that I got. Uh, this next image was taken at uh, Asiatic, the riverfront, which is um, a tourist uh, destination. It's an entertainment, it's a night market um, on the banks of the river. Uh, to me, it very much sums up the two very different sides of Bangkok that we're seeing. And on the one hand, you have actually the old trader's house, which was built in uh, uh, 1912. To me, symbolizes the old style of life that you might have found at the beginning of the century, at the beginning of the 20th century. Um, and then on the other side, the, the giant Ferris wheel symbolizing the, 
the modern world and, and, and the progress that we're seeing in Bangkok. So I guess the, the obvious question is to what extent these two worlds can coexist. Uh, it's obviously an issue that a number of capital cities grapple with as they try and reinvent themselves, become modern cities, but at the same time uh, keep their identity and character. I was, um, I'd just been taking photographs uh, down on the river and I was in a taxi when out of the window I saw this rather gorgeous overgrown building. I um, asked the taxi to stop, I leapt out and checked it out before returning that afternoon with my 20 kilogram Linhoff camera and camera gear. Uh, and I took it because I was so nervous that uh, it would be torn down and probably turned into a shopping mall if I didn't do it immediately. It actually was the old um, uh, tax and uh, government tax and excise department. Um, I rather loved this image for the, uh, the tree, the branches growing out of the brickwork and it really connects up with one of the major themes in my book which is the idea of nature battling to take back the, uh, the ugly concrete city. Now having seen the first set of images, uh, I'm moving to a, a new format. Um, these uh, next few images are um, much more about street life photography um, because Bangkok is such a vibrant and, and, and lively city. For this I used a Mamiya 6 camera, much easier to use, much smaller. Um, so this image was actually taken in Chinatown near Ratchawong Pier. This is the, uh, one of the oldest neighborhoods in the city. Uh, dates back pretty much to the foundation of Bangkok, which uh, was 1782, if I remember correctly. Um, Chinatown's still a wonderful place to explore despite all the um, recent developments, including the opening of, a, uh, of the MRT, a mass transit system, a couple of months ago. But still, um, fantastic vibrant markets and uh, little crowded streets to explore, so well worth doing. At the beginning of the 20th century, this, um, uh, this street, which actually just off Silom Road, uh, was still very much rice fields, uh, there was a couple of um, sleepy canals nearby and, uh, and rosewood trees. Uh, in fact even now I think it does give this very charming feel of the old days of the city. Uh, in, in, in this photograph you actually don't see any cars at all. reason for that was it was taken in early 2014 now, at that time, you had the red shirts uh, and yellow shirts basically fighting it out on the streets of Bangkok. So a lot of the area around was closed off to, uh, to vehicles. But um, I have to say, I rather like the way that it was then. I came across these uh, two men covered in oil uh, down a narrow street in Talat Noi district. To me, they very much represent the, uh, the old way of life in the city when uh, a day's work really comprised hard, physical, manual labor. In, in this case, they're actually trading uh, its, its automobile parts, second-hand automobile parts. Um, I mean, as we all know, uh, the younger generation is moving away from this sort of this type of manual labor uh, automation technology is taking over I, personally i don 't have anything against progress, but I do find it a very beautiful image 
Okay, so uh, you can see from um, this image that uh, the food was so delicious, nobody took any notice of, uh, of me, even though I'm actually taking the photograph from probably five meters in front of them. Uh, this was actually one of the best known uh, street food restaurants in Bangkok. Uh, Bangkok itself, uh, one of the most famous uh, street food capitals in the world. I've actually, I've never eaten personally at this restaurant. I'm told if you do, the thing to go for is uh, yellow curry and pork. Um, and if that's run out, the, uh, the fish balls, uh, apparently the other choice dish to have. Uh, no way. Uh, this photograph leads to uh, another of my um, favorite themes, actually, which is cables. Now, I, I think if there's one hallmark that sets Bangkok aside from pretty much any other capital city in the world, uh, cables are it. Um, there are thousands and thousands of kilometers uh, of them hanging down from wooden posts, uh, hanging down from narrow soys. Um, most people hate them. Personally, I find them rather wonderful. I, I, they remind me of this sort of spider's web ensnaring the city. So I do like them, but uh, they're beginning to go. They're um, being buried, and I understand five to ten years from now, uh, these cables will be gone. Um, one other point about this photograph, uh, the rather charming uh, building on the corner, um, that, that was built around the, the early 1900s um, when this area was actually one of the major commercial uh, business centers in the city. Now you don't see many coffee shops uh, like this anymore in the city. Uh, this one's about 50 years old, although some of the Nescafe jars look like they could be even older. Um, it very much harps back to the days when people would visit coffee shops uh, to talk and to drink coffee rather than in this day and age where it is to check your apps, to link to social media. So it is it just brings home um, what a different world this was 20 30 years ago uh, this barber shop is uh, is no longer operational it's uh, situated out near the airport out near suvanapum airport in uh, huatakea uh, originally the shop house itself is about 100 years old uh, and in the, the early days, uh, it could only be ac accessed by, um, by boats um, on the river. I think it does give a, a, a wonderful feel of, again, the old style, the wooden shop houses. Uh, you've got the framed pictures of the royal family here. Um, elsewhere in the community, you've got uh, old welding shops that look like they could have been pulled out of a museum, uh, there's little coffee shops, uh, it's a, a wonderful place to explore and again get the flavour of what the outskirts of Bangkok was like uh, 50 to 100 years ago. You probably think that this photograph was not taken in Bangkok, uh, it was, it was taken uh, in an area called Bangkrachal, which is known as, uh, as the Green Lung, sort of a peninsula uh, with the river on three sides. And you can get there sort of a five or ten minute boat ride from, um, from the temple, or from a, uh, the pier outside the temple in, in Khong Toi. I actually, I often go there and it gives a wonderful different side of Bangkok life. You can walk amongst the mangroves. 
you can hear the sound of the birds, even the air probably feels a little bit cleaner there. So a very nice um, spot to get away from it all. And probably the most amazing thing is that many people still don't know it's there. I mean, it, increasingly uh, at weekends it gets a bit more crowded as people go on their bicycle rides and the little nature walks, but uh, a, a very special place to my mind. Okay, I have just three photographs left in my uh, presentation. Um, this was taken uh, Yawarat Road, which is one of the main through fairs in the city. I actually set the camera up and took this on a, it's about a four minute exposure, because I just wanted to get this idea of the, uh, of the energy and, and the movement and really the excitement that you do find in, in, uh, in Chinatown. In fact, this street was originally better known for its, uh, its brothels, its, um, uh, its gambling dens. Um, nowadays, it's much more better known for gold shops and um, little markets and, and, its, uh, and its restaurants. The, uh, the locals say that the twists and turns of Yawarat Road uh, are supposed to um, reflect or supposed to be like the back of the dragon, which, um, which is the most auspicious creature in, in Chinese mythology. Um, I included this uh, photograph here because I find this rather gorgeous building, the sort of thing that you'd expect to find uh, maybe in Yangon or in Hanoi, but maybe not so much in Bangkok. But I, I find it very, uh, very nostalgic, um, very much, again, transport, transports me back to this era which is, uh, which is disappearing. I, I should add here that um, uh, in recent years we have seen in Bangkok this trend towards restoring some of these old buildings and, uh, and really reinventing them for new purposes. So especially in, uh, along Sharon Krung Road in Khlong San and uh, Ban Rat District, we're seeing a number of buildings transformed into be it bars or restaurants. We're actually seeing a number of um, galleries opening. So this is the positive side of, uh, of what's happening to the city. Um, this is my uh, last image. Actually has quite a funny story to it. Again, I was looking around to find a good vantage point for, uh, for this old wooden house. And actually, the, the only, I realized the only place that I could take the photograph from was this large cargo boat on, on the river. So one afternoon, I, I turned up um, on the pier, and there was nobody around. So I, I, I waited and waited, and I could see the light changing. And I realized, if I want the picture, I, I'm just going to have to walk up the gangplank and, and uh, see if anyone's on board. So I carried my heavy camera gear and I, I got on the, uh, arrived on the boat. Again, there was no one around and it was a really very substantial sized vessel. So I thought, well, I'll just go up to the prow and set up my tripod and, and start taking photographs, which I, uh, I duly did. And I think I'd just taken this photograph when uh, this crewman who'd been asleep um, on a hammock woke up and, uh, and came over. And rather than scream abuse and throw me off for trespassing, he just wanted to take a look at my camera and, uh, and asked whether I liked Thai food. So only the sort of thing that would happen in this uh, amazing country. Um, at this stage, you probably wonder what's happened to uh, all the vanishing buildings and communities that I talked around about at the start. So I'm just going to briefly tell you uh, this lovely wooden building on stilts was torn down about 
18 months after I took the, uh, the photograph. Um, this area on um, Banker Chow and the boats, that's been filled in, the boats are gone. Uh, if you want to see Banker Chow, uh, go soon. It's, it's still a lovely area, but it's changing um, very fast. Uh, the old barber shop has been closed for 10 years. Uh, the owner told me, he said, I don't like Bangkok anymore. I don't like all the modern developments. And he told me that he was going to become a monk and spend the rest of, the time, rest of his days in a temple. Now, I don't know whether he's actually done that. I haven't been back since, but that was certainly um, his plan. Uh, this rather lovely building, uh, gone, it was torn down. Um, about two years ago. It's now an office uh, development. Uh, this closed down. Um, the authorities in their worldly wisdom have been trying to clean up the, uh, the pavements. A lot of vendors, street markets moved. So this restaurant does exist in a different location. Definitely not as charming as it once was. Um, now, the other one I wanted to point out was uh, work has just started on this building. Uh, it's being uh, restored and eventually turned into a five-star uh, boutique hotel. Um, so, in some ways, the structure lives on. Um, personally, I rather like the way that it was. but. Um, uh, anyway, I hope that this has given you an idea of old Bangkok and an idea of why I have spent the past five years um, trawling this heavy camera gear, trying to capture some of this history which, um, which is going, and it is going um, very, very fast. So um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the images. If you're interested in the books, they're on sale here, and um, a portion of the proceeds will go towards charities that support um, a couple of the communities um, where I photograph to enable the, the children and the youth to, uh, to have a better life. So um, thank you, and if anyone's got any questions, please fire away. Thank you very much, Kun Ben, for sharing with us your photographs and the stories behind uh, you taking them. Um, I have a question. I mean, everything is vanishing. How did you choose which, um, which scenes to represent in your book? I mean, that's a very good question. Um, one of my starters for this was to really try and photograph uh, buildings and areas that were not well known. So you'll see I've avoided uh, most of the tourist areas. Um, and I've avoided buildings that have already been uh, renovated. I've, um, I went, really looked, I trawled the city on, on motorbike, on foot, by boat, uh, looking for just very uh, evocative buildings that um, um, that gave a, a sense of the city as it was. To be honest, there's many, many uh, buildings I photographed that I couldn't find space for in the book. And actually, there are still wonderful areas of Bangkok which haven't changed a great deal, which I will hope to photograph in the future. Thank you. Does anyone have questions? Well, you kind of answered that when you said you hope to photograph it in the future, but um, I, don't, I, stay, I don't live in Bangkok anymore. I was living here for 23 years, and it's just appalling every time I come back. There's, you know, oops, there goes another one, you know, and, and it's just so unrecognizable now. Do you, do you plan to keep doing this outside of Bangkok, or are you going to... It just must be kind of sad all the time. How do you cope? 
I, I totally agree. Um, I think it is quite a sad project, actually. Um, and uh, every time I go back to some of these buildings that I photographed and I see another one um, torn down, it, it, it really hurts. It's, uh, I would like to do this outside of Bangkok. I, would, uh, I have photographed all around Thailand before, um, but I would love to be able to do stuff up on the border. And, uh, but they are, it's a very heavy camera to lug around, very time-consuming process, but um, who knows, it might yet happen. I know this book is about uh, a vanishing Bangkok, but what about the appearing Bangkok appeals to you as a photographer? I mean, just setting aside your feelings about uh, beautiful old buildings and history disappearing, what about the Bangkok that's appearing is interests you visually as a photographer? Uh, sorry? Oh, appearing, appearing, the, the, the city the that's buildings. coming. The, the new new environments, new things that people are doing. Well, what about no, that world appeals to you visually? I, 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 part of it does, and I think that you know one of the exciting things about Bangkok is certainly at the moment you still have the very different sides of it. Um, I think there's some wonderful new ar architecture uh, going up, and I uh, where you have areas where you've got. Uh, combination of some of this rather gorgeous old architecture and the new is exciting. But what I, I find uh, rather disheartening is where you just have these vast new uh, developments that are happening, whether it's on Rama 4 or on various other parts of the city where all the old shop houses are going and they're being replicated by buildings uh, that could be in any other capital city in the world. And to me, one of the things about architecture is that it, it makes Bangkok unique. It's what, it gives it the character and it gives it identity. And I think that if you end up with architecture that could be uh, is similar to what you find in Kuala Lumpur or in, in Hong Kong or Singapore, then uh, um, then Bangkok has been deprived of a very important part of its history and identity. I hope I sort of... Uh... Well, uh, certainly we wouldn't find a picturesque people sitting in the mall eating. It's not as picturesque as the, the photo that you had along the side of the wall and being black and white and the thing. Mm -hmm. I think uh, maybe for other books, you might use another camera, because uh, in the past you've, you've had coloured photographs also. Uh, for the, the earlier books, I did shoot mainly in colour. I, and I, initially I shot some of the images uh, for this book in colour. Because there's uh, some wonderful pastel coloured buildings that you see. Some of this would have been very special, having done in colour, but at the end of the day, black and white is just a much more evocative uh, and nostalgic medium, which is very much what uh, this book is about. Uh, but yes, if I was going to photograph outside the city, I think I would leave my truckload of camera gear here and move with something much smaller and, and uh, faster to use. Well, we look forward to hearing about your adventures for the, the out-of-town uh, expeditions, too. And let's give another hand of applause to Conven. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm around if anyone wants to come up and chat, and I'm very happy to sign books. The books are on sale outside. <laughs>